All right, so as many of you know, structure for motion is a branch of photogrammetry, but most commonly refer to structure for motion as photogrammetry. We follow this convention. And photogrammetry is, is well on its way to becoming a standard part of archaeology, but as helpful as new technology can be, it's, it's not always as helpful for past excavations. Uh, we do recommend following standard photogrammetric practices for all current work. Uh, but these photos from past excavations, even relatively recent ones, are not always ideal for photogrammetry. Our purpose in this paper is not to explore the utility of photogrammetry, uh, but rather we show that what can be done with photogrammetry uh, when the photographs were not taken under ideal or, or optimal conditions, <coughs> including using photographs from several years to, to many decades in the past. Um, and we do discuss some of the challenges. Our results indicate that successful photogrammetry Tree models can be created under a variety of conditions, uh, with overlap being the, the primary limiter, which it did affect all of our models to one degree or another. Uh, in this study, uh, our models were created in Azure Soft Photoscan Standard Edition, uh, which is uh, relatively inexpensive. It's only 59 US dollars for uh, an educational license. Uh, and it also requires uh, relatively little training. So for our study, we modeled uh, four structures at three different sites in the southwest United States, all in the state of Utah. The first site is Wolf Village, which dates to around AD 1100. The original laser scan of this structure was lost and only recently recovered. Additional impetus for the creation of a 3D model was that excavations from 2013 unearthed an antechamber on the southern end of the structure, and an associated structure was expanded both in 2013 and in 2016. Uh, the pit structure is the largest yet found in the region, while the above ground structure has the most rooms found in any structure in this region. Structures were backfilled for preservation purposes at the end of each year, and it was impractical to remove the backfill each year. So. All these most recent excavations, we could have used photogrammetry. We uh, had not considered it at that time. So our purpose for making these 3D models was to show the relationships between these structures. Challenges we faced were these photographs were not intended for photogrammetry and were taken with a telephoto lens with different zoom levels, which is strongly not recommended for photogrammetry. Some of the photographs have people and various objects that are inconsistently moving from photo fo to photo. A number of photographs were unusable, um, but we were able to create 3D models of all the desired features, and we were able to do it without actually masking any of the moving objects. They weren't in enough of the photographs to, to cause problems for us, and that did save significant time. We combined the models of the 2012 excavation, the antechamber from 2013, the service structure as excavated in 2010, a pit in the structure that had to be modeled separately because of the dark areas and uh, one aerial 3D model that was made from uh, photographs taken from a drone in 2016, uh, made by Scott Ewer and Haley Ferguson. The alignment of the models was accomplished, accomplished using the open source software uh, Blender. Models may be aligned in a number of ways, but for our purposes, the easiest method was just to overlay the plan map to align the features. One benefit of this is that we realized that the antechamber had been placed in the incorrect position uh, by almost a meter. Fortunately, it was a pre-publication version, so uh, it wasn't a, a big issue. We were able to correct it. And this does demonstrate an immediate benefit of this type of photogrammetry in that they can eliminate some human error and are usually more accurate than hand-drawn maps, even uh, when done with uh, photographs that weren't meant for photogrammetry. This slide shows an orthographic photo taken directly above the structures from the 3D model. There are a number of small holes in the model where sufficient overlap was, lacking, was lacking. You can repair these either, either in a 3D modeling software or, more easily, you can just go into a photo editor and, and smooth those out. Uh, so one challenge of historical photogrammetry is assessing the accuracy of the 3D model. Best method is to compare the photogrammetry model to a model collected via a laser scanner. Accuracy can also be compared to measurements taken directly from an artifact or feature. In the case of Structure 2 at Wolf Village, shown here, we were fortunate to recently recover the presumed lost laser data. The laser scanner was a ferro-focused 3D 120 with plus or minus 2 millimeters of accuracy. 
The free software Cloud Compare was used for the comparison. The mesh models were converted to point clouds and aligned and registered. The cloud to cloud comparison was used to determine the distance between the two point clouds, which produced this image showing the aligned point clouds and their differences. The Western Tunnel has the greatest variation, while many of the subsurface features are not well matched. These images compare the West Tunnel with the laser version, the photogrammetry version, and a photo used in the photogrammetry that was taken at approximately the same time as the laser scan. From these views, the, the photogrammetry model may best represent the 3D structure of the tunnel. But the overall accuracy was excellent for our purposes. And uh, photographs from this next site were taken with uh, the same camera action, and the overall accuracy uh, in space seems to be approximately the same, except there are more problems with some of the thin stone slabs in the model. This comes from Alkali Ridge, Site 13. It dates to the uh, late 80s, 700s. Uh, there were fewer usable photographs per feature, and there were a greater number of moving objects and people, but the greatest difficulty was the number of relatively thin stone slabs you can see lining the walls of this room. These models were also made from different excavations. These three rooms were excavated and photographed in 2012, and the remainder were excavated in 2013. But the two main features this year were not adjacent. We ended up with four models from two different time periods and combined them into one. As you can see in this 3D model, there are several distortions in addition to the holes in the model. These models were aligned by using comparable uh, features in each model, and we found the accuracy to be sufficient for our purposes and together provide the equivalent of an ortho photo. We seem to have enough time, so I'll let the last, rest of this play. The uh, animation was done in uh, Blender. Here we can see the uh, ortho photo. I didn't put in the uh, overlap of the plan map, but it matches very well, except in cases where it seems like the plan map itself is actually uh, a little bit off. It should be mentioned that uh, many of these plan maps were made by uh, students at a field school. So our last site uh, was a reconstruction of a kiva from the Nancy Patterson site. It dates around a thousand years ago and was excavated in the 1980s. Each photograph was duplicated with a black and white and a color camera. Uh, the slides were digitized using a high resolution scanner. Fortunately, it was the same scanner. And no metadata exists for these images and the camera the camera parameters are unknown. Our goal was to use both black and white and color photos, thus we converted the color photographs into grayscale. Each camera was aligned separately as best as possible, and then the camera calibration was saved separately for each camera. The photo scan has the ability to estimate the original camera parameters. Uh, we then loaded in all of the photos together and aligned and added the separate calibration uh, parameters but we were not able to su successfully uh, align the cameras in any sort of reasonable way. Uh, so what we did was we made separate 3D models from each camera. We were able to make a 3D model from the black and white photos and from the color photos. And so we added the color back in because uh, we weren't using, able to use them together. Um, the color model has a lot more holes as you can see, uh, but the black and white model had fewer holes, uh, but the geometry was a lot more accurate. Uh, you can see on the floor there are a lot of distortions, it's very uneven, and uh, some of the wall features uh, were not nearly as well aligned. The alignment was quite good actually for the color photographs. It also uh, it took a lot more time to uh, try to attempt to align the cameras for the black and white photos. Uh, the biggest problem we had is that most of the photographs were taken really close up of the separate features. We had uh, only a couple of photographs that showed the overall kiva, and they were not from enough angles. So the greatest challenge we found is aligning cameras. Once accomplished, generating the 3D model is generally unproblematic from this point. Camera alignment is, is automatic for good photos, but difficulties occur when the photos were not captured with appropriate equipment or settings such as telephoto lenses, or particularly when camera overlap is minimal. I found that uh, the telephoto lenses have a tendency uh, to make uh, parabolic shapes out of flat surfaces. Uh, so often it's a attempt to uh, attempt alignment using multiple alignment configurations. Uh, I cannot tell you 
why one setting works in PhotoScan while another setting does not work. Uh, but it's not the same from, uh, from project to project. Uh, there are a lot of options available. And using the highest possible settings is not always uh, the best for alignment. Sometimes lower settings will work better. Well, sometimes higher settings will work better. So if the initial alignment of your camera is so something like this that makes no sense and doesn't look good, don't lose hope. Uh, there's still a chance you can make a successful model. So, often some of the images cannot be aligned, uh, even when using the professional version of PhotoScan where you can manually align the photographs. Uh, we found the best success is to manually reset all of the cameras until uh, you only have properly aligned cameras that show good geometry. Then you can actually realign the cameras one or a few at a time. And generally, several of the cameras that were originally distorted will actually uh, show up properly aligned and can be used to generate the 3D model. If the realigned camera is causing too much noise, then just make sure you don't use it. Some of them, no matter what we did, even with manual type points in a couple of cases, we're not able to align them uh, successfully. Uh, we were able to obtain good camera alignments for each model actually without using manual type points. So it saves some money and some time if not using the professional version of PhotoScan. So in conclusion, we did not develop any groundbreaking methods, uh, but we do show that with time and patience, near laser scan quality results can be obtained in some circumstances with the most limiting factor simply being the number of photographs available. Thank you.